Big neck or white neck? Yeah. Good afternoon and good evening everyone. <laughs> that way I figured I'd cover all my bases. Anyway, I hope you guys are doing great today. I am doing fine. It is a nice, lovely spring day. You could smell all the fragrance of all the different things that are blooming right now. So it's really nice. And uh, yeah, so yeah, I'm doing good. My arm is, uh, my arm is getting better, and, uh, yeah, so anyways, what do we got going on here today, what do we got going on this week, well, we're hopefully going to start planting corn here this week, we just got our first load of fertilizer in yesterday, um, they brought it over to the far away field, I'm sorry, but we didn't get any footage of it, well, my brother did it yesterday. He didn't get any footage of it, but hopefully he'll try to get some footage of spreading it today. But yeah, it's been kind of a logistical nightmare this year to get anything shipped or moved. I don't know, just that the guy or the, the guy that we buy our fertilizer through or whatever, uh, it's just that the, um, just kind of recently the freight rates went up. We've already paid for a fertilizer and the shipping was already, you know, was included in that price. But I'll, I'm pretty sure that's how it was. And so he's trying to shop around and find the cheapest freight rate. Because otherwise he's going to have to eat. You know, The higher it is, the more he kind of has to eat. Because we've already, like I said, we've already paid for it. So, I don't know if it had something to do with that Colonial Pipeline deal being shut down. And the stuff going on over there in the Middle East. I don't know, but freight's going up. Anyway, so he's trying to shop around and find us the best, find the best deal for freight. So that's kind of making things take a little bit longer. So, um, so for now, I got to work here a little bit at the feeding here. Um, I got to go get the corn planter ready to go, and um, yeah. So it's gonna be busy, busy day and a busy week. I think you're talking a good chance of rain this week because we are dry. We are bone dry. Let's see what we can get down here in, uh, today and go from there. Okay, everybody, um, why that water is going on the mixer wagon there, I thought I'd just come out here to the machine shed, and uh, yeah, we got the corn planter moved in here, I think they moved in here, what was it, a couple weeks ago or something, but anyways, I need to look over some things here in the corn planter, in order to get it ready to go, I gotta get the, obviously, the finger pickups on here, and that bolt's missing, and I gotta look over some stuff, and then I need to, this thing here, uh, I need to replace this. That broke off. Just gotta lock this thing up because for some reason when they made these corn planters, they didn't make them, these earlier ones, they didn't make them so they fold up and over. And then I gotta look over these things here. Um, sometimes these things right down in here, they'll wear out just a little bit. So uh, I gotta look all over all these things over and see if I get some of those. Um, yeah, so anyways, 
And the plan is our first field of corn that we're going to plant is going to be over there in the far away field. I don't know. We got to plant beans over there too. We broke up half the field. It's 130 acres. One side is going to be corn. The other side is going to be soybeans. So I don't. I think we're going to wait to do the soybeans until we get done with the corn. So. But anyways, I gotta get this thing looked over to see if I need to get some parts for it or not. And then, um, yeah, I hope it's gonna work okay. Cause last year we had a little bit of trouble. There's a slip, or yeah, there's a clutch deal in here, and it was slipping more than it should. But I don't know. Eventually, someday we'd like to update this planter, get a newer one that folds up. And um, yeah, but you know how it is. You gotta do it as you can afford it. A little bit, oh! There we go. Ah, there we go. Okay, my brother, he's gonna head over, start spreading some fertilizer, right? He's just gotta grease it up there in the yard. And he's gonna head over and start spreading that. Um, I got a quick call into John Deere here. I gotta shut that thing off. Um, I'm not done with the feeding yet, but I just, I gotta get called into John Deere in case they gotta order something. And then my cousin, Matt, he's gonna come over and he's gonna take the tractor, the TG210 and the disc and head over to that far away field to disc it. So that way um, we can start working because he, he owes us owes us some money back so he's just gonna work off the money so but anyway i better uh better get that off and uh get busy keep busy stay busy Okay, um, I guess you've seen we've been doing some work on this. Um, yeah, been working on this thing for probably two hours now, at least. Burned up two hours of time trying to get this thing. We got it. The, um, this bearing was out. Of course, we replaced it. We had a new bearing, but in the process of trying to get the bearing off, or to get to the bearing, this, we destroyed the sprocket on here. Because that sprocket was rusted on there, so I put some anti-seize on here now. So the next time that sprocket will not stick on there. So a little bit of anti-seize saves a whole lot of trouble. But yeah, so I've been working on that for a while. Um, I got, called on John Deere and got the parts ordered for the corn planter that I need. So those are going to be coming here. Something you know, should be tomorrow. But we can't find any corn because we need to get that thing fixed finish up so we can spread the fertilizer so we can take that tractor and the disc over there to the far away field so we can disc it so we can plant the corn but we can't do any of that until we get a new sprocket and my brother went to the farm store to that one that's called runnings they didn't have anything there that big so and then he tried calling john deere by the time he called john deere they were closed they closed at five so um in the morning we'll have to try something right away and see if we get something for that but um but just that that sprocket was a sob to get off of there <sighs> just know it was just rusted on there being as a fertilizer spreader all i could say is the last person that fixed it if they just would have put or when they made it just would have put anti seas in there gosh that just saved so much so much time but anyways my cousin matt um obviously he was over here too helping he went back to his place to see if he could find a sprocket if he had one over there or something but i don't think he's gonna find anything but anyway i gotta get going back to the finish the feeding chores here
Well, good afternoon and welcome back to day two of this video. Or I should say not welcome back, you were already here, but welcome or however, it's day two anyways. Anyways, I just got done. I just got a bale grinding in the mixer wagon right now while I'm waiting for that bale to grind. I need to get, uh, where are those things? I thought they were there. Oh. I guess they're not here. I was looking for those finger pickups for the uh, corn planter. I thought they were on the back of that corn head. But I guess actually they think they're on, maybe they're on the corn planter over here. Yeah, that must be where they are. I don't remember where I put them. I don't see them. <sighs> I wonder where I put those things, but I don't know. I don't know where they are right offhand. But anyway, um, this morning, um, the dealer, actually the Pioneer dealer that we bought our seed corn from, they delivered the seed corn and some of the, I don't know if they delivered all the soybean seed too, but yes, uh, we got Pioneer seed corn. Everything is non-GMO, it's all approved. Um, it's not untreated. And yes, you can use non-GMO seed for organic. Biggest thing this year was um, the guy, or the, the, the master's choice dealer that we were, were buying our master's choice seed corn from last year, he, um, he just quit. Um, it just wasn't working out for him anymore to do the, the master's choice stuff. So anyways, um, the next closest dealer other than that is down in three, three and a half hour drive down in Iowa. So, um, we really like the master choice, but we wanted to get, uh, we tried to get some other stuff, some other organic seed. They didn't have the kind we were looking for, so we ended up with this stuff here. So, it's all, it's all okay. It's all approved with the organic. We've done this before. If you can't find what you're looking for in, in, in an organic variety, you've done a seed search, if you can't actually find it, then this our next thing so we got that's i think it's a 90 someday corn i don't even know what it is it says it's untreated yeah uh what is it how many day maturity is it i don't know i can't find what it says here but i think it's a 90 someday corn so anyway i gotta find those things put on here while i'm waiting for the hay to grind but um fertilizer spreader um we couldn't find a sprock in a town. My cousin Matt, he had to go up to another town, Watertown, and he found one up there for us. So he's gonna bring that back here shortly. Then we get that fertilizer spread, get the field work, and hopefully tomorrow get the corn plant, get this corn planted, or some of it. So yeah. So we'll see what happens. We'll see how everything goes.
finally got the fertilizer spreader all fixed. My cousin Matt was going to take it over there to the far away field where my brother Steve is was disking earlier. I guess you saw a clip of him leaving a while back. And so yeah. And now we got a, I got a load of hay. I guess we didn't know about it that he was coming to bring us it's a load of hay until I don't know, probably about just maybe an hour or two ago. So yeah, we got a load of hay here. Just for the milk cows. Um we, we, we did really know for sure if we were going to need that load of hay, but we thought maybe we'll just take it anyway. The guy, the farmer that that had it, he kind of really wanted to move it. Um, it was from another farmer here in South Dakota. Um, I think it's Av Avion, South Dakota. So yeah. So anyways, I got to dump this on the mixer wagon, move the mixer wagon out of the way, and then I got to start. Um, I gotta start getting um, the bales unloaded here. So the trucker here, the farmer trucker, he can uh, get back home. Day three of this video, everybody, and uh, you can see I'm milking cows. I'm milking cows uh, solos today here because, uh, well, my brother Stevie had to go over to that field and the far away field, and he's gonna go finish spreading a fertilizer. Uh, last night he went over there. He only got about 12 acres spread. He had to quit for the day. And uh, so anyway, he's gonna go back over there, try to get an earlier start. And uh, get it, get that down. And then obviously I'm gonna finish milking these cows. I gotta take care of some stuff that my brother normally does. And then uh, we get a chance to work in that corn planter. So we'll kind of see, we we'll just kind of see how the day progresses and see if we get done. It's all we can do, but that's kind of what's going on around here today. Hey everybody, it's uh, Wednesday, May 19th, and I'm over here at the Farway Farm, and I'm gonna be spreading some fertilizer. So we got some fertilizer in here on Sunday, and so we've got the TM125 over here to, um, for unloading it and then loading. And I got, um, oh, seven bags loaded up last night. And then I spread out about 12 acres worth and then it was time to head home for chores. And our cousin Matt, he was over here helping us out with the, some of the disking. I, I disked probably about two thirds of the field yesterday. Um, and then he was, uh, running around getting some parts for us to uh, fix our fertilizer spreader which I'm sure Paul has some um, some footage of so when uh, they were able to get that back together then he came over here with the fertilizer spreader and then he took over for me disking and then my son he was over here helping me and well he helped on Sunday night too and he helped me get these bags off the um, trailer because you really need somebody up there just to guide the um, straps into the pallet forks. It just goes a lot faster. So he did a really good job with helping me with that. And then he helped me 
last night too with loading up the fertilizer and like I said I got about 12 acres spread out and then he needed to get home he had some cattle that got out his wife called him and so he needed to get back and it was time for me to get back for chores anyway so I'm gonna finish spreading out that um, load here now and then I am going to uh, load it up again and keep spreading because we need to get all this spread out over here so we don't have to worry about it getting rained rained on sitting in the bags I want it to get rained on just when it's spread out on the ground so all right I'll get some footage here in a little bit of spreading so see you guys in a bit okay everybody um, I thought maybe I'd just explain for all of, like the non-farmer people out there that maybe have never seen this done but on a fertilizer spreader well like how this one works anyways it's, it's ground driven so you have this little tire here and it's going to spin backwards as this one goes ahead and that's what drives your chain and then you have these these uh, spinners back here and this has a 40 foot spread so one side will take it out 20 feet and the other side will take it out 20 feet and so here's your chain that brings the fertilizer and it drops it down into these two compartments and, and then it spins it out onto the ground and then you have this gate here that allows the fertilizer to come out and I adjust it according to the test weight of the fertilizer so last night I tested the weight of it and it had about I don't know 78 79 pound test weight and then you have to look at this chart here and you figure out according to your sprocket so I have the you know, on the low range which uses the 15 to 15 to 96 to sprocket and then you just that's your top number up here on this chart and then you have to look at it according to how many inches you have open the gate you just kind of got to figure it out by how many pounds you want to put down so I'm looking to hit somewhere around um, 350 pounds to the acre it maybe ain't gonna be quite that but that's not what I'm shooting for so that's how it works and I usually like to come back here every once in a while just to check to make sure that every once in a while you can find a chunk in the fertilizer and it can get caught in there and then it won't flow through the, um, the little compartments there properly you won't be getting your fertilizer spread out evenly so that's pretty much how it works and then like I say PTO that drives the spinners back there and the ground drives the chain and I'm sure Paul he explained to everybody the problem we had with the, the bearing that went out and then the sprocket that we ended up breaking trying to fix it so I'm gonna give it a go here guys so you want to have it running at PTO speed that's pretty close something like about I don't know a little over six miles an hour here you can't really see the fertilizer flying out from here because the particles are so small but it's I can see it ricocheting off the ground so I know it's working then earlier this spring I replaced that board over there on the left hand side the one extension on here because we we ended up cracking that last year and breaking it off when we were loading and as you're spreading you always just want to 
keep an eye on that floor chain down there so that just in case something happens, you know you're not spreading out fertilizer and you can stop. Yeah, I know a lot of big farmers, or, well, most even small farmers today, they just hire their, their local co-op to come out and, and spread the fertilizer. And then they just work it in. But I guess for us being organic, that's really not an option. I don't know, maybe you could hire them to come out and you could load them up and they'd spread it. I don't know, I've never checked for that, but I guess I really don't want to spend the money to have them come and spread it. And we have a spreader anyways, so we just do it ourselves and save ourselves some money that way. And like, for being organic, you know, we just can't get our fertilizer from the, the local elevator because that, that stuff is mostly synthetic and, and we can't use that. Sometimes in the past we used to get um, some sulfur from a local elevator and that stuff actually was approved for organic use and we would use that but that was before we started working with the uh, agronomist that we have now and he's got all the connections to get the fertilizer we need and, and uh, you know gives us the recommendations for what he thinks our, our fields are going to need because he comes in uh, soil tests every fall and we see what's going on and that's the big reason why like earlier we I spread lime out here because he was saying this this ground was um, it, it needed some lime it'll help loosen up the soil because the, the soil it compacts really easy over here and then also the um, pH was kind of high to neutralize the soil a bit. Yeah, I know I've said it before, but I'll say it again. This is where I really like this GPS. It's, it's worth the money that we spent to put it in because it sure saves a lot of headaches when you're out spreading fertilizer. I think it's a, definitely a worthwhile technology to have in at least one of your tractors. It'll, it'll pay for itself over time just by the accuracy and you know helping you um, get your spread width right. You get all of your acres covered with fertilizer the way you're supposed to. You're gonna get better yields more consistently throughout your field, so I think it's just a good, very good technology to have. So alright. Well I'll keep you guys posted. Thanks for for watching. Okay. I know it's probably been a few hours since I last talked to you. More than a few hours. That's been four hours maybe since I last talked to you guys. But anyways, um, I just got back from my cousin Matt's place. Um, I was just helping him um, put an ejector pump back on his tractor. And uh, I know I had to come back and get a book. I had to make sure about something because Something wasn't quite timed up on the uh, it wasn't quite timed up on the engine right so uh, I had to double check something in the book so oh so I run a little bit behind here so I gotta get going with the feeding here and uh, yeah so that's kind of the deal so let's work at this and I just, I know for sure we ain't gonna get any corn planted today, but at least if we get, uh, get something done with the corn planter anyways. 
Yeah, I forgot to tell you guys one other thing here too um, this morning. Um, one of the things that we wanted to get for a corn planter so when we do uh, the soybeans is you know when you plant soybeans you're always planting at a higher rate. Um, we bought one of these things here for the corn planter. Uh, it's a bushel and it's an extender for the boxes. So um, yeah but that's uh that's what that is bought that from uh sloan express so uh now when we plant soybeans we will fit more stuff on the planter so uh, i just thought i'd show you guys that that's uh hopefully that's gonna come here before we start doing beans and uh that will save us a little bit of time Okay, it is uh, time to end the video. Yeah, we're all done with chores, it's everything. So it's been a really long day, a long three days. And I guess I don't know if we're gonna get uh, any corn planted tomorrow because it is sprinkling out a little bit. I figure if I pulled the corn planter out of the shed and left it sit out, it'll make it rain because we really, really need some rain. We're bone dry, even though we got that five inches of rain back in the uh, beginning of April, we're pretty darn dry. So, even though what is today? Today is the 20th. Is today the 20th? I don't know. What is today? Oh, well, now it's the 20th of May, I guess. So, yeah. So, hopefully, we get some rain. It'd be nice if we got a nice inch of rain. That would be really nice. But, anyways, we'll see what happens here tomorrow. We'll hopefully get some corn planted. Actually, it is tomorrow, but we'll see what happens. So, anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Um, please don't forget to like, rate, comment, and subscribe. And also, please don't forget to check me out on Instagram. And just, I don't know, I hardly go on Twitter anymore. I, hardly, I don't even do parlor anymore. So, just, just check me out on Instagram. And also, check out my Rumble channel. Um, it's the same thing, Organic Dairyman over there. So, if you're on Rumble, make sure you so follow me because it's, Oh, we can't say subscribe, but follow on there. So, anyways, guys, thanks a lot for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Have a good night. Take care, and see you in the next video.